with the sun in, in Virgo, the, the, the woman clothed in the sun, and the moon at her feet, and 12 stars at her head. You could go to stellarium.org and download the free software, check it out for yourself, download the software, back the time clock off to negative 2, which is the way the software reckons 3 BC, back the date off to September 11th, and you will see the exact alignment of Revelation chapter 12, which is a detailed description of the Messiah's birth signs and symbols that are used in Revelation 12 are well-known astronomical symbols. Here's a superimposed picture over it. Now we have Scorpio and Libra, the scales, but in the ancient times this was one known as the dragon. Uh, you have a very small window of time where all of these things can be present at the same time, where everything is accounted for. Well, the sun was clothing the woman, the king star, king planet in Leo, the sign for the tribe of Judah. All of these things did occur in a year that fits well for Jesus' birth, and that is 3 B.C. The real sort of interesting thing about 3 B.C. is, is since this concatenation of signs uh, can only occur in an 80-minute window, we know exactly uh, the date of the birth of the Messiah in 3 B.C., and that date is... September 11th. How convenient. September 11th. Can you imagine <laughs> singing it's the most wonderful time of the year on September 11th? I believe that was strategic. We had 3,000 people killed from dis disobedience at Sinai, right? 3,000 people perished at Mount Sinai. For what were they doing? The golden calf that they said, let's make up a calf, worship the calf, celebrate the calf, and pretend it's Yahweh. Pretend it's Yehovah. It says they were looking at the calf and they treated the calf as Yehovah. That's no different than what we do with Christmas. It's not. No different. The earth opened up. 3,000 people were, were judged by God for that. 3,000 people were redeemed at Pentecost. 3,000 people were sacrificed on September 11th. I really don't believe it had anything to do with box cutter toting terrorists on airplanes doing the impossible. The only proof of that was a paper passport that somehow survived two buildings coming down at free fall speed and landing in a pile of ash in their own basement. And we bought the story. I did, up until about two years ago. No, it doesn't add up. Lent is about weeping for Tammuz. Read about what God thinks about Tammuz in the Old Testament. Ezekiel, God's not happy about that. Easter is Ishtar, bursting out of an egg. The bare-breasted fertility goddess. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the resurrection of Christ. Everything to do with the spring equinox. Valentine's Day, the festival of Lepercus, another rendition of, Nim of Nimrod. Halloween, day of the dead and evil spirits. The church really has no problem with that one. We all say, that's evil, that's pagan, stay away from it. But all the other ones that we're doing are just as pagan. In some ways, even worse. Thanksgiving, dedicated to the goddess of harvest, Ceres, Cerulea. Sunday worship was changed by Constantine. He changed the Sabbath to Sunday. Look it up for yourself. Don't take what I'm saying. Again, I hope I just caused you to question and look it up for yourself. I'm just telling you what I believe the Lord has revealed to me. If you want to learn more about pagan Christianity, here's a few books up here, Too Long in the Sun, by Richard Reeves, Time is the Alley of Deceit, The Pagan Christian Connection Exposed by Michael Rood, Epidemic, Examining the Infected Roots of Judaism and Christianity by Dr. Russ Hawk. Those are some great resources to search these things out for yourself. Guys, this is not a salvation issue. This is a love issue. And I'll tell you what, I loved those pagan holidays growing up. Loved them. That's me. My first big toy, my G.I. Joe helicopter, my fuzzy head G.I. Joe that I wish I didn't blow up at Boy Scout camp with my 22 because it's worth a lot of money right now. <laughs> I thought it was cool to take my little action figures and shoot them up with 22s. <laughs> I go to a convention to find out how much that's worth now. I'm like, oh, man. I have a lot of fond memories of Christmas, guys. Fun times. Christmas plays. Oh, by the way, that's me. Santa Claus, that's me, all right? Yes, I had to get a lot of fat pads and to make me... I was a mall Santa, guys. <laughs> the only reason I stopped doing that was because I was sitting there. I've never had chicken pox. And this kid, two kids actually, they were just getting over chicken pox, scabs all over their face and mucus coming down, sat on both sides of my lap. Now I'm a germaphobic, so I'm, <laughs> I, I'm already hot in my fat pads. I went into a deep sweat, man. I started sprinkling sweat on people, freaking out because this kid's like, look, Santa, I want this. And he's like, scabby mucus face. <laughs> and I've never had chicken pox. So I'm thinking I'm dead. <laughs> you know, no more mall Santa for me. 
I toured around with Alvin and the Chipmunks doing the Christmas Christmas play. Okay, I get it. I love Christmas. All right, I get it. I, that's me playing Jesus. I wrote, directed, and played Jesus in Passion Plays on Good Friday and Easter. How you get three days dead from Friday to Sunday, I'll never know. But we played the game. We believed in Easter. It has nothing to do with that, guys. Uh, that last quote there that popped up on the screen uh, is M Michael Rood is fond of saying this. He said, Traditions are handed down to us in innocence and accepted in ignorance. That's true. I don't believe anybody had an evil agenda, with, agenda when they were passing down these traditions to me. I think they were ignorant of the truth of it. I was until just recently. Just recently. And again, I say this is not a salvation issue. This is a love issue. What do the scriptures say? Because our heart, I know everybody in this room, your heart is to serve God. You want to love God. You want to celebrate His birthday. You want to celebrate His resurrection. The problem is we're doing it on Nimrod's days. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. It's not a, my righteousness was purchased at the cross. I made righteous through the blood of Christ. This is not about keeping the law to earn salvation. I've got that. Though my sins be as scarlet, they're made white as snow through the blood of Christ. That's taken care of. Now I've got my purchase, my salvation. I have his righteousness. He says, hey, do you love me? I say, yes, Lord, I love you. Well, Rob, do you love me more than these? I feel like Peter. Rob, do you love me more than these? Well, yeah, yes, Lord, I do. Then keep my commandments. He, he goes on. He says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. He says, by this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Do you really want to kill somebody? Do you really want to commit adultery? Do you want to have sex with sheep? Uh, come on. The commandments are not hard. <laughs> and this is love, that you walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. What's one of the commandments? Well, one of them says, learn not the way of the heathen. <laughs> Don't be doing what Nimrod does. He says, some cut a tree out of the forest and they deck it with silver and gold. That's an idol. <laughs> And if you don't think it's an idol, why do we bow down before it to put our presence and then bow down before it to take our presence? It's just repackaged idolatry that has nothing to do with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The traditional holidays that most cultures celebrate today, which center around both the winter solstice and the spring equinox time frames, can be traced back to one source. Nimrod, Semiramis, and ancient Babylon. Yeah, the details vary, but the general concepts are the same. Thus, considering the origin, I simply choose to distance myself from them as the call of the last days is to come out of Babylon, my people. Why? That's a, that's a call of love. So that you do not partake of her plagues that are coming. Because God's going to pour out His, just, his justice. Why, did, why does the scripture say that Elijah must come before the great and terrible day? Why did he come the first time? He came the first time to draw a line in the sand and say, Hey guys, you can't have this Baal worship mixed in with the true faith of God. You can't do it. He's going to come for the same reason, I believe. Hey guys, draw a line in the sand. All this stuff, the seven Nimrod holidays I just showed you, don't do that. Why? Because there's plagues coming. And God doesn't want us to be part of that. There's a resource, that if, you, if, if this is the first time you're hearing this sort of thing, I can't stress highly enough, this is probably the best that I've ever seen. Uh, it's a video by Jim Staley called Truth or Tradition. I can be pretty passionate, pretty in your face, and cause a lot of problems sometimes because I am so passionate. Um, this guy is very non-offensive, but he lays it, just lays it all out in a very non-offensive way and shows us where our traditions come from. And I'm of the position now where I don't want traditions, I want truth. And he says, come out of Babylon, but he has uh, something to replace it. He says, come celebrate with me. Let's get rid of the seven holidays of Nimrod and replace them with the holidays of Jehovah. Notice I said it's the, the, the holidays of God. The feast of God are not the feast of the Jews. Scripture says it's the feast of God. Four of which were actually given before the law. So everyone says, don't get me under the law. I start quoting Galatians. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Four of them were given before the law was given. And at Pentecost, the law was given on Pentecost. And then the remaining three, trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles, are afterwards. And if you look at that chart, you see how it lines up with the things that God has already done, that Jesus has done. I came to realize that this stuff is really a, a script. In the scriptures, these things are called a moed, appointed times, appointed places, appointing meeting, right? It's a mikra, it's an assembly, a convocation, a rehearsal. When, it, when, I, when I understood that, that word means rehearsal, something clicked in my head because I've been in theater my whole life. I understand rehearsal.